New tonight, federal employees are making their voices heard. Did government agencies respond well in adapting to the pandemic or was it a complete dumpster fire? Well, just this week, OPM, the Office of Personnel Management, basically the government's HR department, published the results of a survey taken by 625,000 federal workers. Now, 15% of federal employees, just over 282,000 people, work here in Metro DC, Maryland, Virginia, and West Virginia. So I thought this would be worthwhile to share. Now, the report is 50 pages long, and for the most part, workers are responding that things are better than they've been in previous years. Here's a few of the highlights and lowlights. All right. 87% agree that their supervisor treats them with respect. Only 42% agree that steps are taken to deal with poor performers. 87% say they know how their work relates to the agency's goals. Only 43% agree that this survey will lead to improvements. How about some pandemic related questions? Well, 65% of agencies expanded telework. 59% of employees were working from home during the peak of the pandemic. 61% said cleaning and sanitizing supplies were available at their office, but only 19% said there was timely communication about possible COVID-19 illnesses at their agency's work site. Let's get some additional perspective on this from our next guest, Representative Don Beyer from Northern Virginia is here to talk with us. He represents more federal workers than any other congressman. Congressman Beyer, thanks for coming on with us. I wanna get into first the results of this survey that was released this week by OPM. The results of the survey, does it basically mirror what you hear from federal workers inside of your district? That things are going well, but room for improvement? You, you know, it was interesting that, that the pandemic um, allowed for an awful lot of telework and people really like that. They like being able to work from home, uh, not have the traffic, not have that additional car or metro expense. Um, and, and most people got as much or more done at home as they usually did at work. Talking about telework, so before the pandemic, it was only about 3% of federal employees who were teleworking. I think right now it's down from its peak, which is above 50, so we're in the high 40s, uh, low 50s. Do you think that this is something that will continue after the pandemic? Is this a way that the federal government could possibly shrink its physical footprint and, and more people could, could do this kind of telework? Yes, absolutely, and not just federal government. I think we're seeing that in many different kinds of businesses. Uh, it's going to be a mix. Um, it's really important often to have people that you can interact with and uh, see, smell, touch, feel, all that. Um, but I think we've also found that when you can roll out of bed and go right to work, when you don't have to worry about where to park or, you know, taking that extra shower or everything like that, that you can actually be just as, or more productive. So it, it will depend on the agency and the mission. Um, but yes, I would expect that we much higher post-pandemic for federal government workers and for other workers than it was before. Let's also talk about federal contractors. As you well know that there are more than double the amount of federal contract employees as there are federal workers. And now they're getting a raise somewhere in the tune of uh, $8,500 a year. Of course, it won't go into effect until next year. Do we have a rough idea of how many people this is going to affect and how it's going to affect their lives? I, I don't know. I don't no, at least in Northern Virginia, how many of them will be directly affected because we're a relatively high income place to begin with, but across the country, it's gonna make a really big difference. And I also think that when we're asking private employers, especially small businesses to do the same, it's really important that the federal government set the right example. Well, I'd like to pivot and ask you about what we can expect tonight when President Biden gives his address to a joint session of Congress specifically uh, you know, the American Families Plan, the infrastructure plan, staggering costs here, trillions of dollars. Then there's, on the other hand, the cost of doing nothing. We, we know that you know, your Republican colleagues are not going to wrap their arms around and embrace the entirety of both of these plans as they've been presented. But I guess my question comes down to how much spending is too much? What should the government be willing to do? And, and what do you think would be able I don't, to do? I'm really pleased that we have a president right now, a leader who understands that the first priority is doing what needs to be done. And then we'll, we'll come to step two and figure out how much of it needs to be paid for and how best can we pay for it. We typically have gone the other way. We've said, here are all the resources we have, now what can we do? And I think that, that what that's led to is a period of relatively slow growth over a long period of time. You know, we want to really embrace the future and, uh, and use all of our resources, which means when you do things like making childcare affordable, 
Um, you're going to put a lot more women back into the workforce and, and really pump up our productivity and also our families' incomes. I think tonight he'll lay out very clearly all the excellent things the American Jobs Act, the American Family Plan will do. And he'll also lay out how we can pay for it without affecting anybody that makes less than $400,000 a year. Yeah, that's a big hang up for folks right now talking about that. Listen, Congressman Don Beyer of Northern Virginia, appreciate your time. Thanks so much for coming on the Q&A. Thank you very much.